Well, I hope this shotgun microphone looks a little better. I've never been quite comfortable with this new camera because, I don't know, I didn't think the sound was good. Here's a little teaser on the Stifler loop. You can see all the diodes. I have 13 diodes around in that loop. I've got my scope probe over here just sitting there in order to capture the frequency. And here I go back to an old style 100 uh, microamp meter that I took out years and years ago from a transistor FET tester. It's a real good meter, so I couldn't stand to throw it away. The bottom scale is, you know, calibrated 0 to 100. Right now it's reading about 96 microamps. And the only thing driving it is, there's the L3 coil. We've got this little piece of copper foil just laying underneath that diode. The capacity there must be, oh heck, very minimal in the real low picofarads. So anyway, <clears throat> with that coupling like that, and only a couple of volts coming out of the generator, we have induced a current into that current loop of some 96 microamps. Now, to carry the calculation a little farther, you, Vichy says that the 1N4148s have a VF or forward voltage drop of up to 1 volt at 10 milliamps. So, let's use worst case scenario. I like that. Let's say it is 13 volts. So we, in essence, have 13 volts at 96 microamps, and it's being induced into one diode from that little tip of foil laying there. So anyway, this is, this is probably the most basic stiffler loop you're going to get, and it's also the one you can expand on to obtain higher currents from less coupling, and surprisingly enough, to get coupling and current circulating from the weirdest places.